Hello everyone, welcome back to the 2021-2022 school year. My name is Mrs. Urbanski, Ms. Donnelly and I were, are the mental health specialists here at Methacton High School. Today we're going to be presenting to you mental health back to school series, Managing Stress. As we said, welcome back to this year. We are so excited for everyone to be here and be back. Although this can be a very stressful time, we are here to help. This is Miss Donnelly. She is in room B136 next to the auxiliary gym. And this is me, Mrs. Urbanski, and I am in B134, two doors down from the auxiliary gym. Today we're going to be talking about stress management. We're going to be doing that through a few videos, some example techniques, and I also provided some additional resources. Please bear with me, I could talk about this all day. So I tried to condense as much as I could into a 10 minute segment. First, we're going to play this short video about what is stress. Okay, thanks for bearing with me. There's a little bit of technical difficulty. The link is not working. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you. Okay, so that video gave us a brief overview of stress. I think one of the most important takeaways from that video is to be kind to yourself. Next, we're going to be looking at what kind of coping skills we can be using to combat some of the stress. First, I'd like to mention the self-soothing coping skills. These are ones that are going to distract yourself using sensory items or through using your senses. Uh, there are two slides later in the presentation where we'll actually practice this together. Next, I'd like to talk about the coping skill of distraction. This is when you would stop and take a break or if you find yourself needing to get up and take a walk or if you are frustrated with homework, maybe you go and do a puzzle or read a book or go on social media for a very short amount of time. <laughs> um, but there are ways to distract yourself, but it's always important to come back to the feeling when you use that skill. Otherwise, it becomes a maladaptive skill. 
Next is opposite action. And that's when you're gonna be doing something opposite of what you'd like to do. So you're not acting on your impulses. An example of this is if you are feeling sad, then you may look up maybe memes that would make you laugh or funny videos that would make you laugh. Uh, next is emotional awareness. Um, and these would be tools for identifying and expressing your feelings. One of my most favorite coping skills that I always recommend is journaling um, or writing prompts. Another really good one here is the use of coloring, uh, mindful coloring. And next we're gonna talk about mindfulness, just briefly, because again, this is something we could go on about all day. Mindfulness is a way to ground yourself in the present moment. Examples would include meditation, grounding activities, and breathing exercises. We're gonna practice two of those a little bit later in the presentation. And what's listed here as a crisis plan is really just a list of supports for those that can help you in a situation where you may be feeling overwhelmed or very stressed or maybe even panicked. Um, the other thing that I always like to add to a crisis plan is writing down my top three favorite coping skills so that I have them easily accessible when I need that gentle reminder. All right, let's get into the example techniques. We're gonna start off with box breathing. Okay, we're gonna start again with showing the video through sharing my screen. Sorry about the technical issues. This can be done seven to ten. A helpful tip for box breathing, in addition to what the video had said, is if you have a piece of paper or a notebook or a picture frame or just something rectangular or square, you can trace your finger up and around as you do the box breathing, and sometimes that helps also ground you in the moment. Next, we're going to watch the short video 
about how to do a butterfly hug. Here's a coping skill for anxiety from a therapist. So this technique has a lot of different names. I personally call it a butterfly hug and my clients really love it. So this is something that you can do whether you're by yourself, in public, it's super subtle and this is how it goes. So there's two variations of this. There's gonna be tapping and squeezing. So for the first one, you're gonna just cross your hands like this and you're just gonna be tapping left and right and you're gonna be focusing on the rhythm. That's the key of this exercise. Just focusing on the left, right, left, right until you feel soothed, until you feel calm. You can do this as long as you need to do it for. The next one, same thing, but now you're going to do the squeezing portion. So if you're more of like kind of into just little pulses here, little squeezes, no one's going to really notice what you're doing. And again, you're just focusing on the left, right, the squeezing sensations on your body. It's kind of like when yoga focuses on breath work, you're going to be focusing on the rhythm and you can incorporate some breathing into this as well. I've personally used this method with some of my students and everyone seems to really enjoy this. All right, next we're gonna do this five senses grounding exercise. I'm gonna try to move through this quickly for you, but what you would do in an exercise like this is you would look around the room to see five, to, to look around the room and say five things that you see. Maybe you notice four things that are touching you. It could be the way the clothes feel on your body. That could be the weight of your body on the chair. It could be your hand resting on your knee. Some th things like that. Uh, next would be three things that you hear. So you could hear a fly buzzing in the room, or maybe you hear footprints off in the distance, but noticing three sounds around you. Next would be two things that you smell. And again, that can be anything from your bad breath <laughs> or maybe you're chewing gum and you can smell the gum. Uh, next is one thing that you taste. So maybe you just had coffee and you can taste coffee. Maybe you just had a piece of hard candy and you can taste the candy or something like that. But this is something where when you are experiencing all of your senses and acknowledging all of your senses, it really does bring you back into the moment. And this is an awesome technique to use when someone is in a state of heightened anxiety and panic. Okay, next we're gonna look at some sensory input and they can be things like fidgets. Uh, my absolute favorite fidget on this page would be these the rings in the top corner, they're called acupressure rings, and they are phenomenal. Um, not only do they serve as a source of sensory input, they can serve as a source of distraction, um, as well as a means to avoid self-harm. Another thing you can look at is temperature, using a cool rag, um, hard candy and lollipops um, activate the vagus nerve, which is directly um, related to the parasympathetic nervous symptom, nervous system. Sorry, guys. Um, plush or pillows, something soft to the touch, music, and movement. Miss Donnelly and I always have fidgets on hand, so if that's something that you need at some point, you can always come borrow them from us. I briefly just want to go over some additional resources and that would be these are some apps that you can use calm is a great app there's actually a free resource for calm that's online it's calm.com slash together um, headspace aura simple habit insight time these are all wonderful apps to use for mindfulness and stress relief Next, I want to talk about SAP for just a minute. Um, SAP is a process that helps a student who's ex experiencing problems that can interfere with learning. These can be things like depression, emotional difficulty, peer conflict, maybe drug or alcohol use, and this helps get students connected with resources that they need. So if you or a friend is struggling with something like this, please, you can fill out a SAP referral form uh, these forms are found 
uh, outside of the nurse's office, outside of the East Wing office. Most classrooms do have the SAP referral form. And here are the members of the SAP team. As well as if you are making a SAP referral on the weekends, it's best to use a safe to say because if it's something that needs to be addressed, addressed immediately, we need to use the right resources. Okay. And these are your wonderful school counselors. We have uh, Mr. Peck, Mrs. Henning, Ms. Dackery, Mr. Ruminski, Mr. Howard, and Mrs. Hartson. And next to, next to their names is their alphabetical grouping. Okay. And these are just some hotline numbers. So this first one is for crisis support, um, and that's through the Montgomery County. Uh, there's also Teen Talk Line through Montgomery County. You can call from 1 to 9, um, and that's every day, as well as text from 1 to 9, and that's every day. There's also the Suicide Prevention Lifeline, and then Montgomery County Mobile Crisis, the Peer Support Talk Line, and Safe to Say Something. If anybody would like more information on these resources, please feel free to stop by and see Ms. Donnelly or myself in C149. We will be in there today from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., as well as for the remainder of this week. And that's it. Thank you guys so much for listening to this presentation, and I hope that you found some helpful information. Have a great rest of your day.